the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of me. Hey guys, people, it's China the Israelite, and today we're going over the seventh commandment. So let's begin. Exodus 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So let's get a witness to that. Deuteronomy 5, verse 18. Neither shall thou commit adultery. Okay, so what is adultery? Um, let's explore that. Leviticus 18, verse 20. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Okay, so uh, that's adultery when you lie with a married person, okay? Um, a witness to that, Leviticus 19, verses 20 through 22. And whosoever lieth, lieth carnally with a woman that is a bondmaid, betrothed to an husband, and not at all redeemed, nor freedom given her, she shall be scourged, they shall not be put to death, because she was not free. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, even a ram for a trespass offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering before the Lord for his sin, which he hath done, and the sin which he hath done shall be forgiven him. So uh, right there it says that they didn't die, but something had to die, because remember the wages of sin is death. We went over that in a few videos. Um, so let's see. So fornication, yes. Okay, so a lot of people like to argue that fornication is not in the Ten Commandments, but we're going to go over that, okay? So Deuteronomy 22, verse 23 to 24. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. So that's interesting, right? Because she wasn't married. A lot of people try to say adultery is, is just if you're married, but she wasn't married. She was just promised to somebody else, but she lost her virginity to somebody else. So to me, that sounds like fornication, right? If Think about it. If I'm destined to be with a man out there, but then I have sex with this man that I'm just dating, he's not my husband. Even though I'm not married yet, he wasn't never my husband. So uh, let's get a witness to that. Uh, John 8, 3, 11. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped, stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So we just read in the first verses that I gave you, that if a virgin was promised to another man, but she had sex with another man, that they both had to die. But these Pharisees, see, they were some, they were some true Pharisees. They didn't even bring the man. And I feel like that's how we know she wasn't married because her husband wasn't there to stone her. They just brought the woman. So that sounds like she was a virgin having sex with someone who was not her husband and was never intended to be her husband. And this is just my belief. I believe that's why Jesus stopped it, okay? Um, so uh, let's move on. Um, example, another example of adultery, okay? Sight and thoughts. Job 31, 1. I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? So yes, 
sitting there literally thinking on another woman and you are a married man, you are committing adultery. And we already went over, you ain't even got to be married to commit adultery, okay? So that's big. Uh, let's get a witness to that. Um, Matthew 5, 27 through 28. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Amen. Okay. So um, let's get another witness. Job 24 verse 15. The eye also of the adulterer waited for the twilight, saying, No eye should see me in disguise of his face. Now, that's for Twitter out the dark. Mm-hmm. Y'all mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about. And uh, P-O-R-N. Okay? Don't do that. That You are committing adultery. If you didn't know, now you know. Okay, so... um. Let's get another example of committing adultery. Mm, divorce, okay? Matthew 19, verses 8 through 9. Now, there's a way to do divorce, people. And we got to get that straight, okay? Because in the beginning, it was not so. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, whosoever should put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, and whoso, whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doeth commit adultery. Okay, so that's that's heavy, right? Uh, so let's explore that, okay? I got a few verses on this, okay? Because there's a lot of pushback on this. Mark 10, verses 11 through 12. And he said unto them, Whosoever should put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. And if a woman should put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. Okay? So uh, Romans 7, verses 2 through 3. For the woman with hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. So, okay, did you hear that? If you uh, choose to divorce, you know, you can write that bill of divorcement up, uh, but you cannot uh, marry another person. If that person is still alive, you are committing adultery. Um, so let's get another witness to that. Luke 16, verses, fifth, verses 15 through 18. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abom abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets wore until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one title of the law to fail. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. And whosoever marry her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. So uh, that verse is basically telling me right there. Like it says it plainly. Don't put away your wife. Don't put away your husband. Don't divorce. But if you're going to divorce, we're going to get to that. Look, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so... Malachi 2, verse 16. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. Now, <laughs> abomination, God hated putting away, okay? First uh, Corinthians 7, 10 through 11. And unto the married I command, Yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. So, remember that. Remember that it says that if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or reconciled unto her husband. Because that's going to come up again. Alright, so another example of adultery. Mm, spiritually. Isaiah 54, 5. 
For the maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall be called. Okay, amen. So, uh, Israel, if you're Israel, you're the body of Christ, and you're married to God, okay? Uh, let's get a witness to that. Jeremiah 3, verses 6 through 9. The Lord said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Has thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She is going up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me, but she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when for when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away, and I given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass that through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with sticks. Now, um, whew, that's huge, right? Because right there, he calls us adulterous because we were going after other gods. We were going after other religions. Same thing people are doing now. And God gave Israel a bill of divorcement. This is when Israel got sent away. This is when Israel got scattered to all corners of the earth. Uh, because his protection was not on us anymore. It was a bill of divorcement. So, um, let's get another witness. Ezekiel 16, verses 30 through 32. How weak is thine heart, said the Lord God, seeing thou does all these things, the work of an imperious, whorish woman, and that thou buildest thine eminent place in the head of every way, and maketh thine high places in every street, and has not and has not been as an harlot, in that thou scornest higher, but as a wife that committed adultery with taken strangers instead of her husband. Right there. We were we were like worshiping other gods instead of our God. Um ooh, remember when I said to remember uh to reconcile? I said to remember that, right? Okay, so Let's go to it. God keeps his words and so should you. Okay? Pay attention. Jeremiah 314. Turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. So woo! Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? God is true in his word. Like it said, if you're going to serve your uh your wife a bill of divorcement, y'all better remain unmarried or y'all better reconcile. And we just read that God served us a bill of divorcement, but he reconciled with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because, uh, yeah, they were tripping. Um, so, yeah, let's move on um, to another witness of adultery. Oh, uh, the churches. Yes. Revelation 2, verses 20 through 22. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent for her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I would cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into, into great tribulation, except they repent for their deeds. Amen. Okay, so uh, that is talking about the church. That is talking about all these different man-made religions. All you need is this right here, okay? You don't need no religion. Because it's uh, religion is going to have some kind of basis in this. But then it's going to mix it with traditions of men. And you don't want to do that because then you're committing fornication. And then you're committing adultery with God. Like, you can't do that. So, okay. So, uh, let's get a witness to that. Matthew 12, verses 38 through 40. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we will see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, we get a lot of signs because we get the last days right now, but we still an adulterous generation. Look at all these people. Uh, I'm Catholic. I'm Baptist. I'm Seventh day of Inland. What is, what is that? What is that? You need to be set apart. You need to be an Israelite, okay? You need to be about this book. Um, so let's move on. 
Consequences of Adultery, Leviticus 20, 10. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Okay, so let's get another witness. Proverbs 6, 32-34. But, but whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he would not spare in the day of vengeance. And, you know, I uh, actually have a funny story. My pastor mentioned this once, and he was talking about, uh, if you commit adultery, that man going to come empty a clip. <laughs> and he's right. You you might die in that, because remember the wages of death is sin. So don't be provoking nobody to jealousy. Why, why would you be going after anybody that is taken? Why, have more respect for yourself. Okay, so let's get another witness to that. 2 Samuel 12, uh, verses 9 through 18. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to, to raise him up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voices. How, how will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? So um, you see right there, uh, David had done something bad. He had literally uh, conspired against a man, his neighbor, to take his wife and he ultimately got that man killed and uh, you see in verse 14 where God was saying uh, well I'm sorry the prophet was saying that uh, you had cause you gave cause to the enemies to blaspheme God because we read throughout this whole video that if you commit adultery you gotta die but God took his sin away and so that the enemies could not blaspheme him. Something had to die. He took that baby, that baby that David and Uriah's wife made together. He took that baby in place of David. Um, so um, actually, yes, we're done. And homework, I want you to finish reading uh, 2 Samuel 12. Read that whole, uh, whole chapter. It's amazing. And then I want you to also read a witness chapter to that, which is Psalms 51. Uh, I hope this video was edifying for you guys. I hope you got something out of it. Keep reading scripture. Keep keeping the commandments. And remember, Israel, Israel. <laughs>